So in our last video, we touched on two very important topics, which is gizmo and subtools. Let's talk a little bit more about those. Let's go back into our palette here, and let's choose a cylinder 3D this time. We've initialized that to put a hole in the middle. We can go ahead and get rid of that. Let's go down here to initialize, we'll take that inner radius and turn it down to zero. So now we just have a cylinder, and let's immediately go up here to make polymesh 3D. So we have this as a piece of geometry. Now you see when we do that, it makes it a PM3D cylinder. Now if we go over here and we do a pend or insert, these are ways to get more tools into this session with this other tool. This is going to be very useful as you start building more and more complex scenes. But we'll start simple for now. And one easy way to get other subtools is just to take this and go down here and hit duplicate. That'll take this tool and make an exact copy. Now right now they're right on top of each other. So if I hit Control W on this one, give it a new polygroup, you're going to see it's going to turn red. If I go down here to solo mode, you'll see solo mode, you'll see it. And then if I touch this one here, it's going to turn green because this is the red polygroup one, this is the green polygroup one. If I turn off solo mode, essentially because the verts are right on top of each other, you're probably just going to see one or the other that you have selected. However, right now we're in draw mode. If I hit W, that's going to put us into move. And then if I go over here to scale, that's E, and rotate is R. So W, E, R is move, scale, and rotate. Now, those will come in handy when we use the alternative method of the Gizmo 3D, which is the transpose line. So if you hit Y or you touch this button, that's going to turn Gizmo off, and that's going to turn into this little transpose line right here. There's a lot of really cool things you can do with this transpose line, but for now, let's go ahead and turn off Y, and we'll just stick with the Gizmo. So. Whether you hit W, E, or R, usually I'll just hit W to bring up Gizmo, you can move, scale, and rotate. And you're going to see that's because all of the functionality is built right into this Gizmo. So if I grab this red line right here and pull, that's going to rotate. If I do the green line, that's going to rotate in this direction, in the Y top-down direction. And if I do the blue line, that's going to be in the Z direction. Same thing with moving. If I grab this blue arrow, I can move it out here to the side and then I can rotate if I want. And you can also hold down shift if you want to snap to increments. So this will snap in five degree increments here. And then when you're moving, if you hold down shift, that's going to snap it to 0.1 increments. So you can be very precise while you're moving. Now, if you want to know more or have go into the preferences here and go to Gizmo 3D, you can change your Gizmo size, your modifiers lengths. And that's actually, um, if you go in here to the Gizmo and you say choose deformer, that's going to be these cone lengths right here. We're not quite there yet, so just hit W to go out of that gear mode. But, I, you know, just so you're aware of that, you can hit this gear icon, and there's a lot of really cool things in here. Uh, and if you get in that state where you see a lot of stuff you don't understand, just hit W, and that'll go back to gizmo mode here. So now you're also going to see you have these white arrows out here on the corners, and then this white circle around the outside of all your other rotational axes. Here's your Z, X, and Y. So what that is is your camera based rotation. So if I grab this white one right here and just kind of rotate, it's going to rotate based on that camera view. Same thing with moving. If I move in this direction, that's going to go, it's going to snap it to your Z axis, your X axis, and your Y axis. However, if I go over here, that's going to move it along that camera plane. It's very useful to kind of move this around in your scene based on your camera angle. Same thing with rotate. Now through here, you're going to see we have scale. So here's Y scale. So you can do non-uniform scale. You can do Z scale and X scale. And if you go in here to the Z scale and then you start scaling and hold down Alt, that'll scale in your X and Z axis. So that's really useful if you just want to make something bigger in this direction, but you don't necessarily want to scale it this way. Of course, this one right here in the middle is a uniform scale, and that's just a really easy way to kind of scale your scene to kind of scale your object uniformly. So if I want a smaller cylinder here, I can move a smaller cylinder up above this cylinder, position it, rotate it, and there we go. Now, I'm in gizmo mode now, and again, W, E, or R will go between those move, scale, and rotate. When you're in the default gizmo, it doesn't really matter which one you choose. However, if you hit Q, that goes back into draw mode, and now we're able to go through here and sculpt. So you can go through here, and you can sculpt on your object, and then if you want to move it, just hit W, and now you're in gizmo mode, and now you can move it around, hit Q to go back into draw mode, and now you can hold down Shift to smooth, you can scale, change your brushes, whatever you want to do, mask, and then when you're ready, 
hit W to go back into gizmo mode, and now you can move these things around. Of course, your masked objects will stay behind. So that's a really easy way. If we go back to the character we were working on earlier, I'm just going to select this tool here to pull out appendages. So let's switch back over to our startup material. And if we want, let's go ahead and turn off our floor as well. We can hold down Control and we can mask out the bottom of this. Control tap to invert this. Hit W and now we can just use our transpose or our gizmo to pull this down. And we, of course, you can see it's kind of off to the side here and we have X symmetry turned on. So if I go over here and touch this little orange dot, the gizmo will go over to this side. So now we can kind of move in this direction. If I go over here and touch this dot, the gizmo is going to switch over to this side. Now let's talk a little bit more about this functionality up here. We've touched a little bit on this gear icon where if we touch that, we have a lot of interesting options in here. However, we're going to skip that for now. And we're going to go over here to this Unmash Mesh Center, Mesh to Axis, and then Reset Mesh Orientation. So to demonstrate these two, uh, I'm not going to work on such a complex object. We'll come back to this. I just wanted to let you know that you could hold down Control and Drag and then go through here and add a mesh. Control Drag, Control Drag again to DynaMesh. And then you can go back through here and we can like smooth this out. And you can just start pulling appendages from your object here. However, let's go back into our tool palette. We'll choose another cylinder 3D, make poly mesh 3D, turn on poly frame. And I'm going to change my startup material over here to sketch shader 2 so we can see it a little bit better. Now let's hit W. So the first thing you're going to see is this little lock icon. If you hold down Alt, that'll switch to an unlock mode. And essentially what that means is you can now move the pivot. If you don't hold down Alt and it goes back to locked, what that essentially is going to tell it is, hey, go ahead and rotate my object, or scale my object, or move my object. However, if I hold down Alt and then do those operations, I'm moving the pivot. So I can move this pivot up to the top, I can rotate the pivot. You can't really scale the pivot, that's more of a Alt-Drag operation, like scaling along two axes. But you can certainly rotate and move a pivot while it's unlocked. And again, unlocking is very easily done just by holding down Alt on your keyboard and that goes into move pivot mode. So now with the pivot over there, if I let go of Alt, now I will rotate from here. I will move from this axis. So essentially holding down Alt allows you to change that pivot of the gizmo. Now another really cool thing, if you hold down Alt and then just tap on your object, it'll inherit that face direction and snap to that surface. So again, if I hold down Alt, and then just move the pivot over there and then alt tap on that face you'll see the y direction goes straight down this object and now we can just go through here and scale it in that direction or we can move it along this direction or rotate it from that point if we want to we can also hold down alt and go to this unmash mesh center now because i don't have anything masked on here that's just going to literally go and actually you don't even have to hold down alt you can just tap it and it'll always go to Unmatched Mesh Center, so it'll go right to the middle of my scene. However, if I turn on the floor, you're going to see here's our Z-axis, here's our X-axis, and of course Y is straight up and down. You're going to see our axis got a little bit off. Instead of it going straight up, it's kind of turned to the side. And that's because when I held down Alt, I just moved that axis here. So you can change this axis to whatever you want. You can Alt tap on here and uh, it kind of snaps back to the world axis. But let's say you alt tap on this face and you want to move it in that direction. But then let's say you want to move it straight forward, but you don't have this pointing straight forward anymore. A real easy fix for that is to hold down alt and go over here to the house and then tap that. That's going to go to world center. So if I go down to the top here, you're going to see that's going to go to the very center of my world. So again, if you hold down alt and you have your object selected and you go to the world axis and hold down alt, that's going to go to zero, zero, zero of your grid plane. But you're going to see that axis is still off. It's not going straight to the Z or to the X. How you get that is you hold down alt and then go reset orientation. So if you tap that, now it's right on that world zero, 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 and then we're Z forward and X to the side. The gizmo is exactly oriented to your world axis. So now if you want to move it straight, in your scene, just move it this way or straight or to the left and to the right or straight up and down. That's an easy way to do that. Of course, now the gizmo isn't in the middle of my object. If I want to do that, just go to Unmatched Mesh Center. Now it's in the middle of my object. So if you ever find yourself with an object and you're 
pivot is just kind of skewed off over to the side. An easy way to get it back to your object is just go over here and hit this go to unmash mesh center and then hold down alt and say reset orientation and now it'll reset it to your world axis. Of course if your object is like over here and rotated this way in your scene your gizmo will follow with it. So if you go through here and then now you scale this non-uniformly it's going to go right down the middle of that axis or you can move it along its own object axis like this. However, if you hold down Alt and reset your orientation, now it's set to the world axis, which may be what you want if you want to move it straight forward or to the left or right in your scene. But now we've kind of lost the orientation of our object. You can easily get that back. Just hold down Alt, tap on these faces here, and you'll see it's positioned just like that. And then if I want to go to the middle of my object again, just go to Unmash Mesh Center. Now, we've been changing our pivot, so we've been holding down Alt and going to the world center. We've been holding down Alt and resetting our orientation axis, and that's allowing us to do the pivot. So if we go to hold down Alt and then change our pivot back to here and then go to Unmash Mesh Center, you're going to see we're right down this object axis, and the pivot is right in the middle of our object. Now, if we choose these two options, go to the world axis and then reset my orientation without holding down Alt, that's going to move my object. So if I just tap this now, it's going to take the pivot where it is and just put that right in the middle of your world 000. zero, zero. Now you're going to see the, the floor dropped. That's because the default in ZBrush is to have your draw menu here. The elevation is going to be set to negative one, which means always set the floor to the lowest subtool in my scene. In this case, if I set this elevation to zero, you're going to see it'll set it to that world 0, 0, 0 axis. So generally speaking, I'll go ahead and leave this at negative one because it's nice to have uh, for dynamics having a floor plane to drape things across that are the lowest point in your scene. Or if you go up here to BPR and render, it'll have a nice shadow catcher available for you at that level. So that's why the default behavior acts like that. But if you don't like that, just go here to draw, set that elevation to zero or really whatever you'd like, uh, and it'll do that for you. But we'll set this back to negative one. So uh, we had our object out in space and it was rotated and have its, had its pivot set and then we went over here and we touched the house without holding down alt and that just moved this entire mesh to your world 000 axis. Now there's another thing that'll kind of do that and that is under your deformation unify. The difference between go to the, my world axis and unify is unify will put your object at the world axis. However, it's also going to scale it to fit within a one unit scale of ZBrush. So if I go over here to my floor plane and I turn on X, Y, and Z. You're going to see we have all three axes. And then if we go back here to draw, grid size, choose one, you're going to see this is a one unit scale. So if I had it scaled up pretty big and I say, and it was off over to the side and rotated however we wanted, and we say go to my world center, it'll snap it to the world center, but it's not going to scale it. If I do that with unify, it'll snap it to the world scale or snap it to the world center and it will scale it to fit within that one unit size bounding box. This can be very handy while you're working in ZBrush, but if you ever want to snap your object to the world center, let's go ahead and hit go to Unmesh Mesh Center here. Uh, that's an easy way to do that. Just go through here, have your object wherever it is in space, and then just snap it to the middle of your world. Now again, we usually you know, reset our pivots. Let's go ahead and turn our floor off. We can hold down Alt and reset this to world center. But if we undo that, just hit Control Z, and now, without holding down Alt and touch that, now it's going to snap this to the world center axis. So if we turn our floor back on, you're going to see it's going to be right on that floor, and it oriented it for us. So if you ever have an object that's like a little skewed and out here to the side, and even if the pivot is a little bit off, remember you can always hold down Alt, tap a face to go right down that axis, go to Unmash Mesh Center, and then you can just hit this reset without holding down Alt, and that'll reset this to the world axis. So now when I hold down Shift, you're going to see it straightened it out for me. And if you wanted the center of your world, that's when you can touch the house and go right back to that center of that world axis. Now we talked about how when we, let's go ahead and turn off our floor here, when we scale non-uniformly and hold down Alt, it'll go through and scale on those other two axes. So instead of scaling down the axis, or you can like scale down the axis first, and then if you want to make this coin bigger, Hold down Alt as you're scaling, and that'll go ahead and scale it along that axis there. Along, in this case, your Y and X axis. However, you may notice if you hold down Control and drag, that'll run a clip operation. So if you'll remember, if you hold down Control Shift and grab Clip Curve, 
and you say control shift and drag and just snap that to that side. You can also hold down control and drag and that'll go ahead and clip from these directions too. So you can just pull from this side, pull from this side, pull from this side, or pull from this side. But you can very quickly clip your object as well as if you hold down alt and rotate your pivot, now you can clip in this direction. So you can clip these points here to flat directions as well. And again, if you want to go into sculpting mode or back to draw mode, just hit Q on your canvas and now you're out of gizmo mode. However, if we go back into move mode, just hit W and here's your uniform scale. If you hold down control on uniform scale, that'll actually perform an inflate operation. So the same thing is going in here to deformation and then choosing inflate. It'll kind of push along those surface normals. Holding down control will do an inflate operation, or you can do uniform scale if you don't hold down control. So let's check this undo slider all the way back to where we just had our cylinder. If we go back here to the subtool menu, you'll see we're back to just one cylinder. And again, we can uniformly scale or hold down control and say inflate along those surfaces. Now there's some other basic gizmo functionality, which is pretty cool. You can, uh, and we'll talk a little bit more about subtools. We've touched a little bit on this, where if I go down here and I duplicate, now I have a duplicate of this. And if I use the move brush, I can move this over. And now I have an extra cylinder in my scene. If I alt tap another object in my scene, and I could be in draw mode, if I hit Q and I'm in draw mode, I can just again, alt tap this. I can start sculpting on this one. I'll tap this one, start sculpting on this one. And it's basically selecting uh, these subtools. So instead of having to go through here and select these in my scene or in my subtool stack, I can literally just go through here and hold down Alt and select these. Another thing you do is you get W and that'll bring your gizmo back. And again, if your gizmo is off to the side and kind of weird, just go through here. And in fact, if it's off your screen entirely, remember you can always just Alt tap your object and that'll bring your gizmo back. There's also underneath your masking menu, you're going to see there's a go to unmash mesh center button. So you can assign a hotkey to that functionality. And then if you just, your gizmo is off the screen, you can hit this button or again, assign a hotkey and that'll go ahead and snap that there. Of course, that's also that button functionality. So if you want your gizmo is off the screen and you hold down alt and tap on your object and then go to unmash mesh center, that's an alternative to that. Another thing you can do is you can hold down control and drag and you can actually drag off a copy. And you're gonna see when I do that, the original object is already masked. If we go over here underneath brush, auto masking, you're gonna see we're getting into a little bit of auto masking with mesh insert. This isn't a mesh insert, uh, but it'll do something very similar when we get into insert mesh brushes. But now what we can do is we can hold down control, we can drag off a copy. And in fact, if we control drag and unmask everything, we can control drag here and you're going to see it's going to make all three of these a new object. Now you're going to see it's not going to do anything to this one and that's because this is a separate subtool. We have this one here which has these masks and these unmasked and then this right here is another subtool. So now with that one selected I can hold down control and drag and what I'm going to do this time is I'm going to control drag this up and instead of and before I let go of my tablet I'm going to let go of control and if I keep dragging it'll just keep making copies equally spaced from our original. So if we control drag again and then control drag and then let go of control while still dragging, you're going to see you can make more copies. Now, if I control drag and let's say I want to make a copy of just this corner one, well, I can hold down control, mask over this one, control tap in my document, and then if I control drag out, I can make a copy of this one. A little bit faster way to do that is if you hold down control and drag to unmask and then hold down control alt and uh, drag, that'll go ahead and unmask this and mask everything else. Uh, and then from here, of course, you can hold down control and drag this out. Or if you just want to move it, uh, and it may be a little abstract having your pivot way off, remember, just go to unmash mesh center, or go to the middle of your object, and now you're free to move this around. If you want to have a little bit of a faster, easier way to do that, instead of going through here and making like a mask selection, let's control drag to clear a mask. Let's go down here to polygroups and hit this auto groups button. Anything that's not vertex welded will get its own polygroup. So you're gonna see they're all different colors here. So now what I can do is I can hold down control and tap any one of these and that'll go ahead and select or unmask that individual object. So very quickly I can go through here, control tap one and now I can either move it around, hold down shift to rotate it. I can hold down control and drag out a copy. And when I do that, you're gonna see these are gonna be all the same polygroup here. So what I can do is control drag again. And the reason I'm doing that is if I have all of these masked 
and I go down here and I hit Control W, which is Group Mask, Clear Mask, that's going to group all of these as the same object. So what I choose to do instead is Control Drag out here, and then go over here and say Auto Groups. However, if it's useful for you, if you're like, I want all of these middle ones here, let's hold down Control Shift. We still have Clip, so if you remember, you tap Control once to go into Visibility Selection. We can use our space bar to move this around. You can isolate all of these objects here. We can hit Control W. I'll go ahead and group all these ones. Control Shift Tap to bring everything else back. And if you want to make that a little bit easier, just hold down Control Shift, switch to Select Rectangle. So now we can go through here and I can grab, say, this one. Control Shift Drag. I can grab these two. Oops. Control Shift Drag and then Control Shift Alt Drag. So now I can very individually go through here and select precisely the ones I want to select. Control Shift Drag to invert that selection. Control W. Or, while these are visible, I can go in here to Auto Groups. Control shift drag. These maintain the same polygroups here. So I can hit Control W to make these all one polygroup. Or I can hold down Control shift alt. I can hit Control W to make them all one polygroup. Control shift alt to remove their visibility. Hit Control W, Control shift alt, Control W. So every time I did that, I made a new polygroup with what was visible on my screen. And now if I hit Control shift tap, I bring everything back and now these have their own polygroups. So now if I hold down Control and tap, it's going to unmask everything with the same polygroup, which is by design. That's how I group them. Of course, I can control drag and then go back down here to group or auto groups. And now they all have their own polygroups here. And again, I can hit hold down control and tap and then select one of these individually. So if you want to just move one individually, and again, we can hold down alt, reset our axis orientation so I can move this one straight up. Or I can hold down Control and drag to unmask everything. Now, if I want to unmask multiple, if I control tap this one and I'm like, well, I want to have these unmasked too, this is where it's a little bit easier probably to go through here and hold down control alt and just unmask these. And now I can move, scale, and rotate those three objects. And again, if we go up here, you're going to see we have two subtools. We have this subtool here. If we go into solo mode, you're not going to see those anymore. And if we choose this one, you're going to see these, but not see these ones anymore. Even though they both have eyeballs on there, you can use Solo to just have whatever one you have selected visible to you. So let's go ahead and control drag with that one selected to unmask. And if we turn off polyframe, you're going to see our unselected subtool is actually a little bit darker. And if we choose this one, this one's lighter now, and this one's a little bit darker. This is, this is an easy way to determine which subtool you have selected while you're working on it just makes it a little bit more obvious. In fact, if you go in here to Preferences, Edit, there's an inactive subtool dimming, so you can actually change this to be very dim or pretty bright, depending on what you choose. But the defaults are pretty good. Now, we've already talked about poly paint, and if we go over here and we have the paint brushes, if we hold down Shift and touch a paintbrush, that's going to turn on the poly paint for all of them, and now you're going to see they're both white. Even though if we Alt select this one or we go through here and select these subtools, it's now showing us the vertex color, which in this case is pure white. And now it's a little more difficult to tell which subtool I have selected. Of course, if you're poly painting and you want to choose like a red color, color, fill object, and then alt tap this one and fill this with a light blue color, fill object. Again, alt tapping here, you won't really see which one you have selected, but you are selecting them. And it's because you have poly paint turned on as to why it's difficult to tell. It won't do object dimming. However, if you hold down Shift and turn off poly paint, now you can see which object you have selected. And of course, since we turned off our poly paint, it's inheriting whatever color we have selected. So we'll just choose white again, and we'll change our material to startup material, or in your case, matcap gray. And then you can very easily tell which subtool is being selected. Now, speaking of masking and Gizmo Moo, we did this, uh, just a sneak preview. Let's go ahead and switch over here to Skin Shader 4 so you can see this a little bit better. When we had that one object where we had part of it masked, and again, if you want to just unmask part of something, so right now I have to control tap to invert that mask, but again, if you control drag to unmask, and then control alt drag, it'll unmask just this portion here, and we hit W. Uh, again, my Gizmo's not anywhere on the screen, so I don't know where it is. I'm just going to alt tap. And now you're going to see, if I go to Unmash Mesh Center, because this is our Unmash portion, and I go to Unmash Mesh Center, it's going to snap to the middle of the Unmasked portion, as opposed to the middle of the object. Or in this case, if we control drag and say go to Unmash Mesh Center, it's going to go to the middle of the bounding box of all of these subtools, because they're all part of one subtool. So if I hold down, if I hit W and I'm in gizmo mode, 
and I control tap any of these and then go to unmask mesh center, it's going to go to the middle of the unmasked portion. And if I continue to make this mask smaller, if I hold down control and mask out the bottom portion of this and then go to unmask mesh center, it's going to hop up here because this is the only unmasked portion. And if I want, I can go ahead and hold down alt and reset this pivot. Now, like we did before, if I hold down control and drag, it's going to add a new edge loop. And I can control drag again and control drag again. And in fact, just like when you're dragging out duplicates, if I hold down control, drag up a, a certain distance, and then let go of control while I still drag, it's going to keep adding edge loops uh, through our object here. So we hold down control alt and unmask this side of the object and hold down control and drag and then let go. You're going to see we can very quickly start adding edge loops or edge rings to our object.